and welcome to another episode of Cooking Over Fire. This morning I have my two daughters with me and we are going to make some campfire donuts. Girls, tell us what we need to make campfire donuts. The first thing we need is a 12 inch. So you might remember this video that we did, gosh, years ago. <laughs> Just look at the girls now. And we had some amazing people that did a review of it. And I wanted to take a few minutes to show this to you. Uh, if you want to see the original video, I'll put the link below, but um, enjoy this uh, recap of our uh, video and how much these people enjoyed it and what you can learn from their review. Thank you very much. Let's get cooking over fire. Yay! Hey! All right, everybody, buckle up, because today we're going full on gourmand, but not in a fancy kitchen. Oh, no. Uh -huh. We're talking campfire cooking. That's right. Primitive delicious, and in this case, unexpectedly donut-y. Precisely. We're ditching the usual s'mores routine this deep dive is all about. Campfire donuts. Sign me up. Where are we starting? We're taking inspiration from the Erickson family. They've got this YouTube video, just charming, from back in 2015, called, appropriately enough, Dutch Oven Donuts, May 2015. Okay, I love it already. Down to earth, real people, real campfire. Gotta be good. Oh, it gets better. What struck me is they use frozen biscuits as their base. No way. That's brilliant, though. Talk about easy prep right out of the cooler. It's exactly. But here's where it gets wild. Their deep frying method. Oh, uh, two. Bottles. Of oil. OK, see, now that's commitment to crispy goodness right there. That's got to be some serious heat. Do they mention what kind of oil? Because that high temperature is key to getting that Maillard reaction going. Mm -hmm. You know, that beautiful browning. They don't specify the oil. But you can just imagine that sizzle and the smell. Oh, man. It's making me hungry. Me too. You know what I appreciate about this? They're not wasteful. Those little dough scraps, donut holes. Genius. Resourcefulness at its finest. And talk about making the most of what you've got. They even use the Dutch oven lid to punch out the donut holes. No special equipment needed. I love it. You know, it's funny. That reminds me of when my family tried to make campfire pizzas once. We just used a cast iron skillet over the open flame. How did that turn out? Well, let's just say it wouldn't win any awards for presentation, but the taste, the experience, being under the stars, cooking together, unforgettable. See, that's what this all boils down to. It's not just about gourmet level food. It's about the experience, the shared joy of creating something delicious together in nature. And speaking of joy, did you catch what the Erickson daughters were calling the donut holes? Hmm. No, what was that? They were comparing their shaves to exclamation points and eyes. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> you can just feel the warmth of this family, you know? Exactly. It's infectious. And it's a good reminder that sometimes the simplest things, a crackling fire, good company, and yeah, maybe a donut or two are all you need for a perfect evening. What do you think? Absolutely. And beyond the tasty treats, there's a deeper lesson here, right? That resourcefulness, that ability to adapt and make do with what you have. It's a valuable skill, whether you're out in the wilderness or, let's be honest, just navigating everyday life. Couldn't agree more. And that's what makes this deep dive so rewarding. It's got me thinking, what other culinary surprises are lurking out there, just waiting to be discovered around a campfire? The possibilities are endless. That's the spirit. So listeners, here's a little food for thought. What will you create? Get out there, get creative, and who knows? Maybe you'll discover the next campfire culinary masterpiece. 